Hey everybody, Cats and TV, and this is part two of our look at the logistic map. In part one, we introduced this function and explored its fixed points, period doubling, and chaos behavior with real coefficients. If you haven't yet seen that, we recommend checking that out first. Link is posted above or in the description below. Recall that for various values of the coefficient a, the logistic map can converge to a fixed point, a periodic attractor, a chaotic attractor, or diverge to infinity. We can plot the behavior for the different coefficients using a bifurcation diagram. Here we see that for coefficient a between 0 and 1, the map converges to 0, between 1 and 3, a non-zero fixed point, and then begins a process of period doubling where it converges to ever larger periodic attractors until the onset of chaos at about 3.57. For coefficients greater than 4, the function diverges. Now we can do the same thing in the negative direction. We see that when the co coefficient a is less than minus 1, it begins to show a similar but different period doubling and onset of chaos. Below minus 2, the function once again diverges. So we can say that for real values of a between minus 2 and 4, the logistic map converges to a fixed point, a periodic attractor, or chaotic attractor. Outside that range, when it is less than minus 2 or greater than 4, it diverges. Simple enough, right? But now let's consider complex coefficients with real and imaginary components. Instead of a line, the coefficients can be represented on a plane. We want to map which complex values of A will converge to an attractor, and which will diverge. We already know that on the real axis, they will converge between minus 2 and 4. So now we have to plot what happens with imaginary values. To do so, we create a program in the Swift language that will plot the behavior over a range of coefficients. A simple implementation of the logistic map takes a complex coefficient a, iterates, and returns true or false based on whether it converges or diverges after a certain number of iterations. If the norm of the complex number exceeds 1, we know it will diverge. Otherwise, we say that it is likely to converge. Now, while this function is simple, it does not scale well to the 1 million or so coefficients we want to try. We will first vectorize the logistic map function to test several coefficients at once, and then also run many of these functions in parallel, resulting in a faster computation on modern vectorized multi-core processors. Does not compute. Does not compute. Finally, we will plot the results for each coefficient, with those that converge in our retro tectronic screen and those that diverge in black. When we run our program, we see the following result. We see a pattern that is rather, well, complex, with these two large circles that touch at a single point, a equals 1, and have several smaller circles out in all directions, as well as some other elements connected by lines. Outside these areas, the map diverges. Now the interesting thing is that we can overlay the real valued bifurcation diagram over the complex valued attractor plot. The two large circles correspond to the area where it converges to a fixed point, and the smaller circles to each side correspond to the period doubling. Indeed, if we zoom in on these circles to the right, we see that they continue to repeat smaller and smaller until about 3.57 on the real axis, which is the onset of chaos. The radius of each circle is smaller by a factor approaching the Feigenbaum constant, which we introduced in the first video. Now let's zoom back out and look at this area beyond the onset of chaos. We see these little shapes, which correspond to the islands of stability with different periodicities like 3 and 7. Let's zoom in on one of these islands. It has this interesting shape that may remind many viewers of the famous Mandelbrot set, with its cardioid and circular sections. That is no accident, given that the Mandelbrot set is also based on a quadratic map. Let's zoom in a bit more. Just as the islands of stability showed localized period of doubling for real values, we see corresponding self-similar circles representing period doubling on the complex plane until the onset of chaos, and then another little itty bitty island of stability. However, we see that localized period doubling happens in the imaginary directions as well. Let's zoom into this area at the bottom, which includes coefficients with negative imaginary components. We see the period doubling circles, but after the onset of chaos in this direction, it appears to branch in different directions, each with their own islands of stability. Let's zoom in over here on this island. 
It's at a different angle, and all values have both real and imaginary components. But it too shows period doubling in various directions. Let's zoom in once again. We start to see some of the intricate detail that emerges at the edges of chaotic regions. Zoom in again. Yeah, now we see a lot of complex branching and various islands of stability. But now we also observe a greater variety of shapes. Some are more round. Some have this sort of pear shape. Let's zoom in on this roundish one. We can see the fractal-like branches in more detail, though it is starting to get more coarse as we zoom into the smallest sizes we can compute. Let's zoom in once again. Very fractal-like, but the detail starts to diminish and what is in and what is out becomes more ambiguous. Nonetheless, it is quite aesthetically interesting. Let's reset and zoom into this area off the main circle. Again, we see period doubling and then branching and various islands of stability. Some really gorgeous patterns here. But for all the intricate detail of this plot on the complex plane, it only tells us whether a particular complex coefficient leads to an attractor or not. We inferred period doubling and chaos from the patterns, but what if we could see it directly? That is, what if we could render a bifurcation diagram in three dimensions instead of two? Let's try and do exactly that. First, we write another Swift program that outputs individual values of the logistic map for hundreds of iterations over a range of points on the complex plane. This produces a data set with millions of individual points. We can then efficiently plot the points in three-dimensional space using a Python program with NumPy and VizPy libraries. The end result is this amazing 3D plot that shows the behavior of the logistic map over the complex plane. If we look at it from above, we see our plot of attracting values. If we look head-on to the real number line, we see our original bifurcation diagram. At angles in between, we can see how the two views interact. Let's zoom in a bit, shift over this way. We can see that the main circle is not flat at all, but warped to represent the varying fixed points on that range of complex coefficients. The smaller attached circles do indeed represent bifurcations and have multiple copies that curve up and down. We see the smaller circles in period doubling and then the onset of chaos. Let's rotate around and zoom in. We see that the circles in the imaginary directions also double in their own variations on the bifurcation pattern. Moving around, we see the complex interplay of smooth curving regions of stability and the more chaotic sections. Let's zoom around and just explore a little bit more. We hope that you've enjoyed this detailed exploration of the logistic map with complex values. It really shows how mathematics can bring both surprise and beauty. If you have any questions about anything you saw in either part of this series, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV 